I've always admired James. He's one of my favorite filmmakers. I think he's one of the greatest filmmakers alive. Um, I've always wanted to work with him. We've met over Zoom. I was in Denmark. He was in his backyard in Los Angeles, and I felt a sense of affinity and kinship with him immediately. And then I think a month later, I was sent this script, and and uh, and was really just thunderstruck by it and by its sort of quiet beauty and and profundity and and um, yeah, and then and, and then I started to work on it. And for me, it was the beginning of the pandemic, and um, I got a call from my agent, Josh Lieberman, and he said, I've, I've read something really, really special. And it's um, being made by a filmmaker called James Gray. And I said, oh, I'm familiar with James's work. It's wonderful. And he said, well, he thinks that you might be right for one of the parts. He's not sure. I said, all right. So he said, so would you consider speaking with him? I said, of course, of course, I would speak with him. So. I can't remember if it was a phone call or a Zoom. We we definitely zoomed eventually, but I read the you know script and I and I loved it. And um, we met, and shortly thereafter, he offered me the role. And then we just began talking. We would have ideas, and I would ask him questions about his life and how I would to just understand more deeply the character. And he would consider them and come at me. And sort of slowly, we established a connection between us because it, we didn't even have to say it. It was it was just understood that um, this wasn't to be a recreation of a doc, it was at, on a documentary level. Um, I was allowed to interpret the character, but I wanted to interpret it with, from the perspective of his memory of her. And we built that and then we wound up shooting it and now we're here, so quite an experience. I, honestly, I think just the, the, the how daunting it was as a challenge um, to play the father of this filmmaker, and to be to exist in the space with him, and to and to and to inhabit a character so fully that hopefully the director can suspend his own disbelief and 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 uh, revisit the past in this way. The character is described when you meet him on the page as a as a Jewish Stanley Kowalski with an engineering degree. And I thought, well, that's a real, you know, grab bag, um, and says so much about someone because K Kowalski is obviously a, a brutish man uh, with violence and in him, and and also tenderness and and love and um, and and trying to sort of create, you know, what James wanted was the most vivid and richest possible expression of these people. Um, so, so that that was a gift as an actor. I'm a sucker for contradiction. <laughs> um, it's one of my favorite type of roles to inhabit. Um, someone who is very clearly two ways that contradict each other. And in this case, someone, and, and, and really if you take a step back, I believe that um, the thing that drew me to the character was how much she loves her family. And the thing that fascinated me about the character is the ways she had available to her to love them, which very oftentimes express themselves in anger, stress, violence. And um, I think it's very important not to judge the past, but rather understand it. And, um, and, and, and appreciate in my own life the privilege of having an education that has allowed me to make other choices but at this time, those choices weren't available. And so it makes love a very complicated thing. And I was really, and I thought this is going to be very challenging. It's gonna be a very rigorous experience. Um, and it required tremendous trust between everybody and openness and experimentation at times. And, um, and that was what drew me to the character was, was, was just all of that. I was so moved by it, and it felt like like great scripts do, that there's a sort of deep underwater river running running through it, the, the subtext of it, and the sort of mute pain of these of these characters, mm -hmm. and the way that every character is sort of brought to a crossroads moment, at the same time that the country is brought to a crossroads moment. It was very um, sort of epic, uh, and yet. It, so intimate. 
I, I wish I could give you a simple answer and say it was just one thing, but I think the thing that I responded to initially was how authentic it felt. You know, um, Jeremy and I speak about this often. We do not live in the world in which we were born. Um, we find ourselves in different circumstances. And I don't mis wish to misrepresent my childhood. I, I was not hard scrabble by any means. But, um, but reading the script and seeing an honest portrayal of people who want so much what everybody wants, which is safety and security and the stress of not being able to provide those things, which again, not meaning to misrepresent my childhood, I felt growing up um, to a certain degree. Um, and then realizing that that story iterates itself in different ways across America and the further away fr that you get from the center, the harsher it gets exponentially by different factors. Um, I was incredibly moved by that and um, angry and appreciative that it was, a, it was being told with such clarity and such a light hand. Nineteen eighty, leading up to the election of Ronald Reagan, a moment in time. You know, this the title of the film is from the song by the Clash that came out in I think nineteen seventy nine. It was about sort of the specter of nuclear war and the sort of f apocalyptic feeling, and and then in in a in a small way the apocalyptic events, seismic events, and upheavals happening in the life of this young boy, um, you know, in, in consonance with the life of the country. Um, but it was, a, it was sort of a prefiguration of the time that we're living in now, in terms of the, the politics and, and, and the racial divisions, and, and James uses this very personal lens and sort of uh, uh, historical lens to, to tell a, a much bigger uh, story about our society. I think, I don't think that James is, you know, the film is not a polemic, but it, he's taking this sort of insoluble problem that remains an insoluble problem, this total Gordian knot that we're mm. all still in the middle yes. of and trying to puzzle through it by asking all these questions and by, I think, implicating the audience. I think we're all put into the situation in a way that Paul is in and that these parents are in, sorry. I don't think he puts you in the audience. I think you discover yourself inside. He doesn't put the audience in it. No, I think right, you just, you, without you noticing, yourself. you discover yeah. yourself inside of it. Yeah. You know, I think if he'd put us in it, I think we would have all resisted. But that was the, to me, one of the most brilliant parts of the film is the way you find yourself in it. Would you think yeah. that that's true? I don't mean yeah. to contradict you. I'm no, sorry. no, it, it sort of nets us in and we're all. Yes somehow implicated.